Don't say that word As I'm falling apart A school kid who just heard No idea what he just heard Wash out your mouth with soap If you talk that way around me Look up what it means A common word, how obscene it is the ocean, chokes the air A virus of the insincere No other word can hurt and maim Than that four letter word, that four letter name Need a new word for love Don't say that word If you can prove that you can say it With authenticity No duplicity Better be written in blood Make your very life upon it If you think I will let you water What charlatans always mutter We profess it to our God on high Confess it when the hand is on the thigh Tell people that they need it To survive all we need 
Need a new word for love I sat by the shore And I pondered How can I describe it better Or should it be decreed There's a penalty A penalty for carelessly using the word love. Penalty for carelessly using the word love. Need a new word for love. Until the day the word is made. I will only say With sincerity And on my heart Look in your eyes and swear Upon the bones of Shakespeare I won't deal in big box prose No LED lit glowing rose That is meant to shallowly satisfy While deep inside we quietly die Residing in a box of gold Taken out when I wish to show That I really mean what I feel I promise you I will reveal That rarest gem in word and deed Still think there's a need Need a new word for love Need a new word for love Need a new word for love Today, we're going to talk about three things, things that mean something to me this very day. This very day being the 17th of January. That's a significant date for me. It's the date that I probably shouldn't even have been here. Now, what I mean by that is that two weeks ago, I had a very bad disease and it could have taken me at any minute. I was unaware of how close to death I was. But not to be morbid or to be morose. It's a happy day. It's a happy day because I've always believed that we as as humans, when we are born on this earth, we have an expiration date. Now, to some, that seems very odd, an expiration date. But we don't know what that date is. And that's what the miracle is, the not knowing. Now, why is the not knowing important to us? It's because we don't have to look back. We can continue looking forward. We can learn the lessons we need to learn. Second, why do some people come upon their expiration date and they don't die? Well, just like I told you over the past three years, my mom was one of those. Why did she live and Others didn't. Why did she have to struggle longer on this world and others didn't? And that's what's in the rub. You have to find out what that mystery is. What is that one, one thing 
that you have to learn. What do you have to learn? Or what do you have to pass on? That's even more important. What kind of sage advice can you pass on to others who are walking a path along beside you? Now, when we go along this path, we start looking back and saying, oh, I could have done this, I could have done that, I could have done better at this, I could have done better at that. Did I do something wrong? Did I really, really do something wrong that I'm not going to make it to be with our great creator? Did I do something that, that bad? Don't look at it like that. Look at it that there is meat on the chicken for you to have a serving of. Just eat what you can fulfill your sustenance, but don't get stuck on a bone. Don't nitpick about every little thing that you could have done, should have done. Be happy. Today I could go on 24 more years. Many have. What would I do with that 24 years? My only goal right now is to make others happy, to bring joy and peace and kindness. This world needs more kindness, more fulfilling words in the, in the universe, ones that mean things. And then when you come to that final date, don't ponder on whether we have done enough, but ponder on what more can I do? How many more could I have saved? How many more? How many more? This is Ma Gilmore, in peace and kindness and love and charity the world. That person beside you that's sitting on the ground, take the time, look them in the eye. If you have a few nickels, give it to them not as charity, but as kindness. Does that mean that they need it? Well, maybe not. But does that really matter? It's the giving that matters. Ma Gilmore here, wishing you peace, kindness, and love. Peace. everyone, Polly Chase here from Marty Fine Art. Have you visited Marty's website lately? I encourage you to check it out. We've added a new section for greeting cards featuring eight of Marty's original artworks, including his latest painting, One-Eyed Wolf. And did you know you receive a 20% off discount when you join the email list? Sign up today at martinmccormick.com and you'll receive a code for 20% off your first order. Shop for fine art prints, t-shirts, tote bags, coffee mugs, greeting cards, and so much more. Apply your code in the shopping cart and enjoy your 20% off discount courtesy of martinmccormick.com. Thanks for listening and happy shopping! Hey, Mr. Marty fans, we're here to talk about winter comfort foods. 
We're here with Erin. So Erin, what's your favorite winter comfort food? Uh, I would say for me, it's all about the carbs. Give me pasta, give me mashed potatoes. Um, I had some fettuccine Alfredo last night that really hit the spot. Uh, Homemade, throw them together, get it at a restaurant, whatever. I don't care. All I want is carbs. Carbs. Mm. Give me some good mac and cheese is what I say. Absolutely. With bacon. Yes, or peas. I love it with some peas. Peas are too healthy for winter. <laughs> bacon is, everything's better with bacon. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Erin. Hey, we're here with Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Hi. Hey. What is your favorite winter comfort food? Um, I think my favorite winter comfort food would be like pot roast, you know, with all the veggies, potatoes, uh, something hearty. And now, do you cook that yourself, or is that something you go to mom's for, or? Yeah, grandma. Grandma. <laughs> mm. You got, yeah, grandmas, grandmas are good for comfort food. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Thanks, so hey, we're here with Carly. Carly, what's you? What is your favorite winter comfort food? Mm, that is a tough question. I oh, let's see, favorite winter comfort food. I would have to say probably like a chicken chili. I'm all about like warm soups and things I can just throw into the crock, crock pot. Um, so probably yeah, chili. Um, and this doesn't really count as food, but I love tea in the winter, so I just drink a lot of different types of tea. So warm, warm, warm thing. just warm things. Warm things yes. warm yes. you, the cackles of your heart. Yes, yes. Excellent. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carly. <laughs> Thank you. A volunteer organist. The preacher in the village church one Sunday morning said, Our organist is ill today. Will someone play instead? An anxious look crept over the face of every person there, as eagerly they watched to see who'd fill the vacant chair. A man then staggered down the aisle, whose clothes were old and torn. How strange a drunkard seemed to me in church on Sunday morn. But as he touched the organ keys without a single word, the melody that followed was the sweetest ever heard. Each eye shed tears within that church, the strongest men grew pale. The organist in melody had told his own life tale. The sermon of the preacher was no lesson to compare with that of life's example who sat in the organ chair. And when the service ended, not a soul had left a seat, except the poor old organist who started towards the street. Along the aisle and out the door, he slowly walked away. The preacher rose. And softly said, Good brethren, let us pray. The scene was one I'll ne'er forgot, and as long as I may live, and just to see it all again, all earthly wealth I give. The congregation all amazed, the preacher old and grey, the organ and the organist who volunteered to play.
we are making some winter comfort food, and it's one of it's one of um, our family's favorites. Winter com comfort foods. It is a pasta with peas and meat, and it has Italian sauce, and it's very good. Step two, we're cooking the Italian sausage. You have to stir the pasta very frequently so it doesn't stick together or else you would have clumpy pasta. When the sausage looks like this, add in the Italian sauce. ingredient to make it extra good. Add in about mm, like a teaspoon of sugar into the well, into the sauce and then stir. When the sauce when the sauce is hot, then add the pizza. And stir. all of the noodles that have been boiling into the sauce. And stir to the final time. Time to do a taste test. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Mm, it's creamy. It's cheesy because of cheese. It's um, the peas add a little um, like surprise to it when you squish the peas, and the the tomato sauce and uh, just completely changes it. Well, I hope you like seeing how we make our cozy comfort food on the Mr. Ryder Show. See you next time.
Why sign up for the weekly bulletin at martinmccormack.com? Well, you get the latest writing of Marty. What's new on the podcast, Strung Out? What's new at the gallery? What's coming up on the Mr. Marty Show? The art video of the week. The music video of the week. And you get 20% off at Marty Fine Art for signing up. Go to martinmccormack.com and become part of the gang. That's martinmccormack.com. Scone Race Club is located in the epicentre of the thoroughbred horse breeding capital of Australia. Although I am not a regular follower of the sport, I do take an interest when horses my family have bred race. My 16-year-old grandson is part owner of a young filly called All I Care About. Her name was chosen from one of the songs in Chicago, which is the name of her mother. Andrew's mum breeds thoroughbred horses as an interest. She and her husband have worked for many years on well-known horse studs around Scone. Today was a midweek meeting with only a small crowd attending. As I live only five minutes along the road from the racetrack, I decided to video some footage for the Mr. Marty Show. Now I find Mike Covelli is easing off their heels, rocking lad saving ground along the inside, and a wider than all I care about from Sizzle Nickel and uh, even wider was uh, extra intent. Mr. Damas is the leader. We were not Alini's expecting all seconds. I care about Mike to play, but improved, which he did. Mr. Damas in front, flying down the outside is behind the storm and going with it is Clavelli. They hit it behind the storm. It's come from last. Well, hey guys. Anya has been practicing for a spelling bee. She is the one of the top three in the third grade. And uh, so I am going to give her another reprieve for one more week. I don't know. Maybe we're going to lose her. I don't know. She's doing so well uh, in school and such and choir and everything. Her world has taken off and it's changed from the pandemic. So maybe we'll just get her when we can get her. But uh, I love her dearly, and uh, we're going to end the show. I want to thank everybody, especially Ma Gilmore, for sending such a beautiful and poignant talk about life and death, and our roving reporter for interviewing uh, people about their comfort food, and to Annie and Anya for their comfort food, and to Jan Crawford for her contributions about the horse race, which was fantastic. So good to see summertime. Can't wait for it to come back. So here we go. Thanks for watching the show. 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 The Mr. Marta Show. The Mr. Marta Show. We had a good time. Talking about comfort food and all the poetry and songs that make us feel so good. 
left us in a good mood on the Mr. Mata Show. 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 Mr. Mata Show. Thanks for watching. God bless you. See you next week.